Election Day is fast approaching, and it looks like it will be an uphill battle for both sides to win the Virginia governor's seat. Voters will choose between former Governor Terry McAuliffe and businessman Glenn Youngkin in a closely watched race. A recent CBS News poll shows the candidates running neck and neck. Our Ed O'Keefe spoke with both candidates in Northern Virginia. What's happening here in Virginia is arguably the biggest political contest of the year, and this is a state where local politics are influenced a bit more by national political trends. So it's notable that President Biden's approval in this state is slipping, at least according to our most recent survey, despite the fact that he won this state by 10 points last year. That has Democrats concerned that they may not be able to turn out enough voters to elect their candidate, Terry McAuliffe. Vice President Kamala Harris campaigning last night for Terry McAuliffe, giving a statewide race even more national attention. I want this man to be elected the next governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. She's just the latest big-name Democrat to campaign for McAuliffe in an effort to motivate Democratic voters as the party's agenda stalls. Are you in a tight race because of what's going on in Washington with the president and congressional Democrats? Listen, I, I think this election is about what's happening here in Virginia. I do think, Ed, in fairness, people want to see action up in Washington. While Virginia's voted Democratic in recent presidential elections, President Biden's big win last year came with a divisive name on the ballot. McAuliffe's trying something many other Democrats are expected to do in elections next year, linking his opponent to former President Trump. Glenn Youngkin is not a reasonable Republican. He is a Trump acolyte. Would it be helpful if former President Trump came to campaign for you? Nobody's coming to campaign with me. Trump has endorsed Youngkin, but to stay competitive in the closing stretch, the candidate is keeping his distance. But I am campaigning for me, not like my opponent who is bringing anybody he can into Virginia because he knows that his campaign is sinking. And he's found traction by emphasizing something else. We will teach history, but I will ban critical race theory. Youngkin's keeping his focus on parental involvement in education and controversial concepts like critical race theory. No wonder Terry wants parents out of it. And he wants to insert government between parents and their children. That focus resonates with voters like Juliet Schweider. Enough is enough. It's time that parents take it back, take control back of their schools. Critical race McAuliffe dismissed the issue taught. as made up. Critical race theory has never been taught in Virginia. This is a racist dog whistle. Will it be in the future? No. Some of the voters we spoke with had a different definition of what exactly is critical race theory. It seems it means different things to Republican voters and those on the left, but it may be working for Republican Glenn Youngkin, which is part of why Democrat Terry McAuliffe is bringing out the big guns in his party. Former President Barack Obama will campaign for him on Saturday, and the president is expected on this side of the Potomac River early next week. And Marie and Vlad? Ed, thank you very much. Uh, and Michael Pope is here now to discuss the governor's race. He's a reporter with Virginia Public Radio. All right, so let's get into this, Michael. The Democratic agenda has stalled in Washington, but the White House is pushing hard for both a uh, vote on both the infrastructure and the social spending bills before this election in Virginia. Um, so what impact do these pieces of legislation have on voters' decisions? Well, if you talk to Democrats, they, it has a huge impact, which is why we've seen Terry McAuliffe working the phones, working his, his, all of his sources in Washington. You know, keep in mind, Terry McAuliffe is a former chairman of the Democratic Party, so he has a little bit more connection to Washington politics than most, you know, Virginia governors, Virginia candidates for governor. And, you know, Democrats are really concerned that if Congress keeps pushing this ball, this football down the road, uh, that that they might not cut a deal until election day after election day. Also, it's worth remembering that this election has already started. You know, the uh, we are in now a like 45 day window of unrestricted voting. It was early voting for this campaign cycle, which is new, by the way. In the previous election cycles, you had to have an excuse to do early voting. In this election, there's unrestricted early voting, and 10% of votes have already been cast. And so that's important to remember when you think about this debate in Washington, is that when they finally get around to making a deal, if that happens, a significant chunk of the vote will have already have happened by then. 
Um, former President Barack Obama is campaigning with McAuliffe this weekend. Vice President Harris hit the trail with him yesterday. Both of them are really encouraging black voters to get to the polls. I know getting the vote out is going to be a, sort of a, a key component here. Um, how important is it um, to that that how important is it for McAuliffe that African American voters come out? How important is their support to his success? It is hugely important. In fact, when McAuliffe talks about his candidacy, he often mentions essentially being recruited to run for governor for a second term. This is very unusual for a governor to come back after that first term. You know, Virginia is the only state in the country that has this four year term limit. So McAuliffe is making a very rare comeback. And he always talks about the legislative black caucus, essentially black lawmakers, recruiting him to run for a second term. So we've seen, uh, as you mentioned, Obama, uh, Kamala Harris, um, Joe Biden himself is going to be in Virginia next week, early next week. And, you know, Youngkin is, is not doing this. He's not having big name people. You just saw in your package, he told Ed O'Keefe that nobody would be campaigning with him. And he's trying to spin this as a narrative that all of these big names campaigning for um, for McAuliffe is essentially a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've seen a totally different approach from these campaigns and the big names and, and you know, their importance on the campaign trail. Yeah. So Glenn Youngkin is hoping to turn some parents' anger with local school boards into a win. He has been focusing on the state's COVID closures and culture war fights like critical race theory. Uh, and during uh, Ed's discussion with former Governor McAuliffe, he asked him about uh, critical race theory. Uh, and, and in the reporting that's been done, a lot of parents struggle to actually define exactly what critical race theory even is. But could this help uh, Youngkin edge out a victory? It's certainly an issue that is building momentum and support on the Republican side. Worth pointing out in any discussion of this that critical race theory is not taught in Virginia classrooms. It is a law school concept. Uh, it's sort of like saying, you know, the theory of proximate cause is being taught in Virginia classrooms. It's not. Um, <laughs> but when you talk to Republican voters, what they believe critical race theory is has nothing to do with the law school concept, and it is motivating them. It's essentially a reaction to all this anti-racism discussion and thought that came out of the murder of George Floyd. And so the, um, the Youngkin campaign has sort of retooled itself to be singularly focused on this issue, on education and schools. And they've sort of abandoned a lot of their earlier discussion about, like, you know, getting rid of the grocery tax. You, you really don't hear Youngkin talking about that anymore. And now this, in the final days of the campaign, it's Youngkin talking about education and, Ob and McAuliffe talking about Trump. Hmm. Um, you know, we're all watching this race, and the presumption is that it's kind of like a, bill, a bit of a bellwether or a, a, um, a crystal ball, if you will. How will the outcome of this race impact midterm campaigns in 2022? It will have a huge impact um, because this period right after the election, when people are doing all the analysis and thinking about what it means, that is the time period when people dis make decisions about whether or not they're going to run for office or maybe whether or not they're not going to run for re-election. So, you know, if Republicans come out of this uh, looking good, even if they don't win, if they just come out of this looking like they've got, you know, wind at their sails, you could see a lot of Democrats, especially Democrats in tough re-election districts, say, this is not worth it, I'm not going to run for re-election. And of course, those seats would be targeted and so this period right after the election is really key because you've got people deciding whether or not they want to run for re-election. On the other hand, you've also got candidate recruiting happening in this environment right after this election. And so, you know, if Republicans come out of this looking well, their candidate, they will recruit better candidates. Um, if the Democrats come out of this looking good, they'll end up recruiting better candidates. So uh, it's it's not just about sort of perception. It, it actually has a huge influence on who ends up running in 2022. Um, and I'm glad that you pointed out uh, that uh, critical race theory is not taught in schools in Virginia. Um, and that's something that the former governor also told our Ed O'Keefe. Um, but McAuliffe is also trying to link Youngkin to former President Trump. 
former President Trump has endorsed Youngkin, uh, but Youngkin has no plans to campaign with them. What's the story there? Because you've got President Obama, former President Obama, coming out to support McAuliffe. You would think that if you are looking for the endorsement of the former president, former President Trump in this case, you'd want him at your side. Why not? It is really interesting how these two campaigns are, are looking at this very differently. On the McAuliffe side, you've got Obama campaigning with him. You've got Biden campaigning with him. On the Republican side, you know, under normal circumstances, you would expect the former Republican president to want to campaign with the candidate, but we're not seeing that because Youngkin has all throughout this whole campaign, he's been kind of trying to walk this line of making sure that the Trump voters are with him, but not embracing Trump so much that he alienates the suburban voters that he needs to win. So, um, you know, we will not see Trump campaigning with Youngkin. That's just not going to happen. Um, but, you know, there was this recent rally in support of the Republican ticket when Trump called in to the rally. Uh, I think that's the closest we're going to see in terms of Trump campaigning for Youngkin. He talked about Youngkin when he called into that rally. And immediately the McAuliffe campaign took sound bites from that, <clears throat> excuse me, and created a commercial. So um, if you, you know, are, or see all the many television commercials about this, it would almost appear as if Youngkin and Trump were running together because the McAuliffe campaign has worked really hard into never letting voters forget that Trump has endorsed Youngkin several times. Oh, that's so interesting. Hey, mm -hmm. Michael Pope, great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.